So there's quite a lot of new aspects to the Disruptive Trends Report 2023. This year we have widened the size and scope of the report. So this year we actually managed to survey 400 business and technology leaders and then for the first time we've brought everyone together um, for a morning of discussion and debate and to share the results of the top 10 disruptive trends in a live event in London which has been an amazing opportunity to bring people together and help inform their decision making and put together plans and strategies uh, for 2023. I think a lot of our round tables recently have been talking about the concept of uncertainty and that's something we wanted to really explore. Um, so for the first time this year we've widened the scope of the report and we're asking questions around this, the wider impact of macroeconomic forces uh, on our members. It's really highlighted how different members are reacting to some of the threats and challenges in the current operating environment and how members are um, exploring disruptive technologies to help them to manage and mitigate the threats of these external challenges. Some of the strategic direction we've got through 23 and onwards I think has been reflected neatly in the report. The reports that we receive from Chief Disruptor are very relevant. Um, they are done regularly so I think that's that's really beneficial to us to, to see outputs from not just our industry but also research that's that's recognised across other industries as well that we can use as a, as a good um, source of information. I, I came today really because of an interest in, in the report and, and I contributed to the survey last year. I wanted to see how my scores, my views were cat catalogued uh, against a, a variety of other industries and peers. And it's been fantastic to see that data now being brought to life with the fantastic analytics. Um, and that now allows us to take that forward into our organization and reflect on that, calibrate, and look at our direction. It's probably a little bit surprising to see such a large percentage of organizations say they're going to increase the technology spend. But maybe if you take a step back for a minute and recognize the macroeconomic situation that we're in, and also the, the fact that so many people also said operational efficiency was very important to them. I think those two go hand in hand. Um, and in fact, what I suspect is that spend is, again, not on really new shiny things, but actually on battening down the hatches, making sure you have those right foundations. And that was one of the other messages that came out of the report. And that upfront investment in ensuring that you've got the basics right and you've got the building blocks to capitalize on the new opportunities is really important. This is a time where that investment is actually gonna pay fruit and dividends. Uh, it's about the next generation of the organization. It's about the next product set, the next services that we bring to bed. So I'm not surprised in that sense. No, I wasn't surprised to see that technology spend was was increasing in a lot of cases, close to half of them. Uh, and that's certainly my own experience in that we will be increasing our technology spend. I think the nature of where the money is being spent is the interesting thing. But I do think many organizations, there are, the way they are dealing with the uncertainty is that they are going to be investing more in technology and digital over the next few years. I think that automation, big data and APIs are probably amongst the top key technologies that are going to drive disruption because in fact, without those, we're not going to be able to have interconnected systems. And I think that's really that next level. We've all spent the past probably decade or maybe even longer investing in some new systems, upgrading the technology a bit, getting into cloud, for example, starting to get more sophisticated technologies in the door. But if you have a number of single point solutions that aren't connected, that aren't sharing and contributing towards a central data pool that allows you to do that big data analytics, then, um, and you're also not automating some of those processes so that you're able to do that more efficiently and effectively, then you're going to be starting from a much deeper hole, frankly, in order for which for you to really deliver some of those key outcomes, whether it's basic efficiency or whether it's new growth opportunities.
You kind of got to innovate and say, you know, what can I do differently to do a lot more for the organization to drive that business ambition. So it's very varied from industry to industry. But I think from my perspective, coming out from COVID and also the socio-economy uncertainty that we have with the war in Russia and whatever, and the inflation and stuff, the, the investment is probably the right thing to do. And I think that's what every organization has made the decision. But looking at the other spectrum, there's still about 39% that states, you know, nothing is changing. So the technology is maturing. I think our understanding of the capabilities of the technology have also increased substantially. If I talk about the health sciences space, we've seen the interventions that have had to take place as uh, the treatments for COVID, right, as an example. And I think that's unlocked some of the barriers, restrictions that may not have been real, they may have been artificial. So for us, it's about maturing that now and bringing those medicines forward faster with the same safety protocols um, than we did in the past. So for me, that next three years is really going to unlock that potential for humanity. We are seeing some incredible new models and products and coming out in the AI and machine learning space, and they are genuinely game changing. And it's really exciting a number of industries. It's also causing a number of existential crises probably in terms of people identifying what do I do and are the robots actually going to take over? My personal view is that that's not going to happen, but certainly roles are going to shift to respond to these new technologies. But I think the disruptive capability, um, but in a very, very positive way in those technologies is definitely something we're seeing in the short term on the basis of what we've seen just come out in the past 24 months. So I, there's a couple of things. So some of the strategic direction we've got through 23 and onwards, I think has been reflected neatly in the report. So there's a good confirmation or affirmation there. I think there's another set of dimensions there, particularly when we look at alternative sectors like the financial industry. And that is very, very important in when we look at customer journey. That's something we're exploring, something we're looking to accelerate, but we've seen such a disruptive trend with the new fintechs. How does that apply to life sciences? So there's some interesting perspectives on things like the adoption of Agile, um, plus the impact of culture. So we talk about people, we talk about the hybrid working adjustments that we're all having to make as a result of the COVID uh, episode. But, but really being able to reflect that back in, it's just not one size fits all. And what are some of those key factors to be able to bring it to life? It's good to see that I think um, a lot of people are, are struggling with similar challenges, whether they be cultural, technology, um, what the future is going to look like. We've all been through the pandemic. We're all out of that pandemic now, um, hopefully. Um, so the, the technologies that were introduced, the different ways of working, a bit of a, a consistency across multiple industries, multiple sized of organizations, maturities. So um, I think it's been really helpful to, to just share that, those learnings and share experiences with people um, around the table today. I think my key takeaways from the report findings were definitely around some of the industry trends and really helping me understand within my industry what are some of those key trends and what are the impacts and how can I use that information to inform better what I'm trying to accomplish within my organization. I think the other thing was definitely around the concept of operational efficiency being really a key driver and a key focus for a lot of people. And definitely within my organization, we're not necessarily trying to do anything new. We're not trying to buy the new and shiniest technology. What we're trying to do is figure out how can we pull on the right levers to make our organization more effective and to give ourselves the best platform for growth and success. And operational efficiency is at the core of that and is the thing that we actually can control. And that was actually very comforting to hear that that view was shared across a number of organizations and a number of industries. I think the main takeaways are that there actually are, first of all, that there really are 10, probably even more than 10 trends. You know, there's, there's not one or two things that we're all having to deal with. So disruption is, is showing itself in a number of different ways. Yeah, yeah there, are some, there are some categories, 
Uh, and in particular, I took away the, the category about the uncertainty. I think people feel, whether it's true or not, they feel less certain about their economic future, their environmental future, the workforce future. So I think people feel less certain, and that's quite important. Um, and it's been obviously a very disruptive period all over the world. Uh, and I think that's, that's my main takeaway, is just how uncertain people feel about what's coming next. Well, one of the brilliant things about the Disruptive Trends survey is that it really helps us to inform uh, the topics and the themes that we're going to be covering with members for the year ahead. So we have an exciting programme of virtual roundtables uh, with some really need-to-know topics, subjects that have come out of our research. Um, we've also got some new reports um, coming out over the year, so watch this space. But ultimately, what we want to ensure is that we build a personalised journey that our members can then really get value from. They can bring their teams on it, they can learn from one another, they can connect, they can disrupt. Okay.